Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MetTech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a Red Dragon keyboard. This is an updated version of the UCAL, which we took a look at a little while back. I'll try to remember, and if I don't, please remind me. I'll put a link to the original review down at the bottom. Not only did I review it, I've also modified it. And I, I do have this in the rotation. Um, it is a black translucent version but this one it's it's got new switches and they're supposed to have made some minimal but noticeable upgrades so today we're going to take a look at this ucal max from red dragon i have to say i have been using red dragons for a long time starting with the k551 552 the full size and the tkl one of the first keyboards i truly took apart spray painted modded did everything to, I learned a lot and it kept on taking it. I mean, I did some things that should have killed the keyboard and never did. I still have um, a K551 from, I wanna say the year it came out that I have modded it's numerous times and spray painted it. It is now purple uh, and it's wearing the MT3 um, Infinity War keycaps. And I mean, it looks a little beat up, but it kind of just works with it i don't know it but i've seen red dragon go from soldered no time with switch only steel plates to gasket mount flex cut pc plates um better keycaps better switches i mean they've got their own set of switches i've, I've been i actually have some that are up for review here shortly uh but i am loving what they're doing so anyway, yep, we've got 2.4 Bluetooth and wiring connections, gasket mounting, um, Mint Mambo, it's brand new linear, hot swappable, five layer padding, and dedicated knob for easy control. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it and see what we've got in the box. So before taking a look at the keyboard, I always like to check what's in the box. We have some stickers, which are included, I think, in every Red Dragon keyboard I've ever seen. I have been saving these, and one of these days, I will be doing a Red Dragon sticker bomb build. I'll also mod the keyboard as well, but I've been saving these just for that. We have a standard wire switch and keycap. We have a standard rubberized USB-C to USB-A. It's actually a USB-C to USB-C cable but it has a uh, adapter for USB-A to USB-C, which I honestly am surprised we don't see these more often. Rat Dragon always seems to include these, and to me, it's very thoughtful because not only do you have the adapter, it's on a tail, so it's not going to be lost, and many, not only laptops, but front panels for desktop PCs nowadays are, you know, because it's a lot less space, they're going with the USB-C port. So having those, I think, is a big plus. Also, the fact that on the other end, we have that L shape, which I think just makes that whole, well, for me anyway, it just makes the whole argument of the connector being on the side, not much of an issue at all. But again, it works for my setup. It may not work for your. We have a user manual that goes over, so we see all of the different um, features, and it looks like we have it in Spanish as well as English. And as I've always been very grateful to Red Dragon for doing this, and I, I don't understand why brands that are, I won't say bigger, but the charge maybe more for their keyboards, why they don't do what Red Dragon is willing to do, and it's such a simple step, but in my opinion, it goes a long way they include extra switches who knows you know you were checking stuff out you know lubing the switch changing the mount changing keycaps and one of the pins just broke what are you gonna do i have a bit of ocd i'd want to replace it with the exact same switch if not i always know that key has a different switch under it. so having some spare switches um from which to be able to replace any of the ones in there already is extremely nice. And this is that mint mambo. It actually has a very light pink bottom, a, uh, I'd say a light green to a light blue, baby blue top with almost a neon green stem. 
It has a really nice bottom out. It's a, definitely a long pole as it has short travel, I'd guess 3.6, 3.5 millimeters. It has that nice glassy hi-fi bottom out. The stem has just the slightest of wobble north to south and almost no wobble whatsoever east to west. That is really a nice switch. And uh, these always used to be the standard blue, green, brown switches, but I am glad to see that Red Dragon is really improving their switch game. And here we are with the Red Dragon UCAL K673, 75%. And I've got to say, even though they retained things that I liked about the other ones, it looks like they have really updated um, the look of this keyboard from the knob that has a very nice pattern in it. It's definitely a, um, it's definitely an aluminum knob with a uh, plastic collar, but the feel on it um, is really nice. This is actually one of the nicest knobs I've seen on a keyboard to date, to be quite honest with you. And I love the purple color with it and the glossiness is just right. Now we do have a taller keycap set almost looks like uh almost has the height of an oem but it is a um it's not sculpted it's just a flat basically xda raised up it's quite interesting i'm loving the colors i'm loving the big legends i'm a big fan of that i like actually i love the fact that all of the um modifiers have all uppercase that's the way i like it i would have switched this around I would have included a couple of extra keys, but that's really neither here nor there. Uh, this colorway is definitely popular. I, if I had to guess, this is probably the most popular colorway that I have on pre-built, um, especially over the last year or so. I don't know what it's called. I probably should look it up and try to find out, but they're all slightly different. And it sounds really nice. It's another Red Dragon board that, honestly, I think a majority of people, whether they're looking for a gaming board or looking for an enthusiast board, would be happy with the way that the sound out of the box. Sometimes when I get keyboards and I start typing on them, one of the first things I think of is, how am I gonna mod it? That's not what comes to mind with this one because I actually like how it sounds. Um, I'm loving the blue bottom. So we've got a two-tone, even though you don't see it. Red Dragon logo is at the bottom, but does... Oh, it's on the side as well. Never mind. On the side, we see that we have the USB-C port. And we also have the connectivity mode switch. And on the other side, we see that we have a pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Oh, yay! And this is actually branded Red Dragon. It is very... Um, it's kind of actually hard to see because it is engraved into the plastic. So, uh, this camera is supposed to be good, but I think I fell for Logitech's marketing. Anyway, Lo um, Red Dragon is actually engraved into the, um, into the top of the uh, dongle. So if ever we lose it and we come across it, it's gonna be a lot quicker and easier to find what keyboard it goes to. So we have a 75%, we have a four key navigation column, we have a knob, and we have F12. All right, so I do have to correct myself. I previously took a look at and modded the UCAL K673 Pro. This is the UCAL K673 Max. I missed that. I didn't go past the RGB, and it's right there as well. So this one is actually... I'm guessing a newer revision. They do have different keycaps on here. This is an MOA profile, and they do have the Mint Mambo switches. Whereas I think that the other one came with, it could have been some of the first Red Dragon switches, but they may have just been, you know, the standard switches. I can't recall. I'll have to see what I can find out about the differences. But let's take a look at these keycaps here. 
All right, so these keycaps are 1.5 millimeter in thickness, and they do look like, because that just looks like the shine through plastic, it may be a combination of the two. We have that nice mint mambo linear switch, quite light. Then taking a look at the PCB, we do have uh, hi-fi layers, which is the PET layer with IXPE above that. And it is north facing with five pins. We do have plate mounted stabilizers. These, I do believe that these are newer. I want to say these are the palm stabilizers. They are nicely lubed inside of the stem as well as at the elbow. And as with the pro version, we do not have um, screw in stabilizer. On the PCB, no holes for that, but uh, I think that's pretty common for Red Dragon. I can't say I've seen one that has um, screw and stabilizer support. These are three pin switches, and they do have the more KO like little box to allow the light to go through. Stabilizers are somewhat loose on the plate, and it does appear that we have. Like on the other one, it is a gasket mounted plate. We can see that we do have flex. It's not a crazy amount of flex, but it's definitely a much softer typing experience than on a tray mounted board. Despite the stabilizers being loose, they actually sound fairly decent. This, I can say, definitely sounds better than the UCAL 673 Pro, uh, which I last reviewed, uh, did. Now, granted, it did have a different profile keycaps. I can't recall off bat right now what they were, but it did not have the hi-fi layers. It did have a nice knob, though this one, I, I gotta say, I do like this color. It's As of late, I've seen this a lot, and I like it, and I've lately just started getting into MOA keycaps and I'm really enjoying them as well. So we do have a nice two-tone case. Um, of course, we have the uh, flip out feet, pocket for the 2.4, and of course the mode switches here on this end. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like with the lights on. Go ahead and plug it in. All right, so those lights come through pretty decently. They are north facing. So um, the keys are tall enough that I don't think even if they were south facing that you'd get that shine uh, in your face. I know some people don't like south facing because of that fact, but we do have a four key navigation cluster over here. I personally would set this up differently, but we'll be taking a look at the software. See, I'm pretty sure it's the pro version of the software. So a lot of these newer keyboards they're using. Um, it's not QMK or Vibe, but it's a pretty, pretty useful and I mean, allows you to program the layers below. But the knob for default does control the volume and pressing it is the um, mute button. It does the same thing with function held down. With the lights on, you actually get the shadow and it really makes them look like round tops, like the older uh, I can't remember the name of that profile keycap. I must say, in my opinion, Red Dragon is definitely, I mean, these boards are still going to work just fine for gaming, but they're also delivering boards that, they're delivering boards that take enthusiasts into mind. And I mean, this is, again, I've been getting to the point and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but each and every Red Dragon that I review just sounds and feels that much better than the previous one. And this one, I mean, I was, I, I, I didn't notice the Pro and the Max. I didn't notice that differentiation. So I must say, to be quite honest, I was like, okay, this is just that same one, but it doesn't have the translucent case. Um, it's just going to be kind of a refresh um, or a different colorway. But I do believe that this is a, better version and it sounds much better just the specs today we are taking a look at the red dragon ucal max k673 
an 81 key 3 mode 75% mechanical keyboard with a knob. It comes with a gasket mounted PC plate, 3 and 5 pin hot swap compatible PCB with north facing LEDs, as well as hi fi layers, as well as included hi fi layers PET and IXPE. It is preloaded with Mint Mambo linear switches from Red Dragon, as well as double shot PBT MOA profile keycaps. It comes with a 4000 milliamp hour capacity battery and weighs in at 864 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 18 millimeters, while the back sits at 25 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 5 degrees. Flipping out the first set, a fold out beat will take the back height to 32 millimeters and provide a typing angle of 8 degrees. Flipping out the final set of fold out feet will take the back height to 39 millimeters and change your angle of typing to 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for 59 and 49 on Red Dragon's website. Links below. So I have it so bright in here that I actually could not tell. These are actually shine through keycaps. Um, and they're pretty well done because being north facing, you can still see a lot of the colors. Let me go ahead and turn down lights in my studio here so that we can actually get it to come through camera at least hopefully all right now it just doesn't want to focus can you focus all right i turned down the lights but it's wanting to focus but i think you can see the um shine through come through so these are moa keycaps with the shine through so but they're pbt I'm used to shine through being ABS, but these are double shot, so I guess they or have I seen double shot shine through PVT keycaps. I can't say that I have. If anybody out there has, let me know in the comments below. All right, so I went ahead and downloaded the Red Dragon software. Don't know why it's a uh, publisher unknown because I know I've installed other um, Red Dragon packages, software driver packages, and it is known. So, setup is pretty standard. You just go through, it installs the files, and then you go ahead and run it. So, we are presented with our first screen, which shows us that we have not only our default layer, but a function one, a function two, and a tap layer, which is really nice. Um, obviously, we can't remap the function key. The function key is the function key. So, you want to use function two as a temporary or as a toggle instead of a tap you'd have to map one of, you know, you'd have to pick a key to map to the function two, which is down in the um, keyboard section, which is next to the function key, which I guess you can add, add an extra function key if you wanted. Now in the settings, we see the device model. Uh, we see the version, though there is no way to update. We can turn on, tap, and then set the sensitivity. We can also turn off sleep or set the time that we want it to go for. As always, we can create multiple profiles for different different things that we're doing. So we can go ahead and say map, you know, to profile one, I'm gonna go ahead and map the function delete to insert, even though I've got the insert key right above, but it's just as an example, always hit the floppy disk to save. And then for the lighting, we can select the predefined lighting effects, or we can create our per key RGB. So it's basically select the color and either select an individual key cap or select a number of keycaps at a time and you can set the colors that way. We also have a music feature which allows the keyboard's RGB to go along with any music that might be playing and then we have a pretty basic macro editor. Um, we have to add a, we can actually organize them under folders but we actually have to add it here first on this on the edit panel. Go ahead and add a new one, we name it and then we hit record, start typing out what we want then we hit stop, then we can go back through, change the letters, what delay they have, as well as remove them all together. You can save it, then you can go back and bind it to a key combination in the first screen that we saw. So we have, I mean, pretty good functionality. I mean, I'm usually happy with just one function layer. This one actually gives us the option for two function layers as well as a tap layer, which I know for gaming, 
tap layers are extremely popular um, and you can also set the sensitivity for that as well now for this keyboard in my opinion uh right now it's 54 dollars so even just a year ago this would have been 99 or more especially with the way that it sounds out of the box we have a very nice 75 percent it's primarily compact though it does have i mean it's not a fully compact 75 percent because it actually does have the separation for the navigation column and it has four keys so i know there's some people that it's like not three because sometimes the knob space is used or there's a space for a badge and there'll be only three keys i tend to agree with that though having the double function layers you know you can always add extra below but if I had a choice, I would go with the four key navigation column, but I do like when it has the F13 as well as the knob, which one, this one doesn't though. This one is a more standard layout that I think a lot of people are gonna appreciate. Um, I actually, it's not often that I like shine through keycaps, but I like these, they're nice and tall. It is a uniform profile, but each key is individually sculpted, so it has a familiar feel almost like an SA keycap it definitely gives me that retro vibe I love the aluminum knob I love how well machined it is and how nice it looks and it works as expected and it does have the um the stepper clicks so it's you know you, it's a nice tactile feedback when you're actually scrolling through um, again the software is comprehensive enough i mean it's not qmk or via but we do have uh the two function layers as well as a tap layer i personally i like this keyboard i've been liking red dragons each and every time i come across you know they send me a new one i'm like oh wow okay they've improved this this one is definitely improved over the pro in how it sounds um i believe the software for the other pro only had one function layer so it looks like they're improving their software Though I would love to see just one software download for all the Red Dragon keyboards, or at least the Pro keyboards, because I know that I mean these this when they list this on their site, it's it says Pro software compatible, and all the Pro software. I mean they have basically the same interface, so it would be nice to have just one Red Dragon package for all. You know, in case you have multiple Red Dragon keyboards like I do, but I don't think that's going to be an issue for too many people. For the price, for how it sounds stock, I mean, <laughs> there was a day when, you know, almost any brand that you bought, you were just, you just knew that either you're going to have to switch out or replace the switches or lubricate them. These Mint Mambo switches that are in here, they're, they're a little lighter than my personal preference, but I could use them just fine. They sound and feel nice. There's absolutely no ping whatsoever. And with those high five layers, we really have a nice, deep, foggy sound profile right out of the box. No needing to open it up, no needing to make any modifications. Now, again, I have modified the um, the U-Count K673. And I, actually, I thought I brought it in here. Let me see. So actually the knob is very similar. I just, because in black, you can't quite see the grooves that it has. Um, like I said, we have a very similar layout. We have more of this translucent black top, but we have that white bottom. And this one's the Pro, the UCAL Pro. This is the UCAL Max. But this one I have modified. It's definitely more of a clacky build. I do have a video out there, and if I remember, I'll put a link to the modification video, and I'm using, I want to say these are cloud switches from Kinetic Labs, if I'm not mistaken. And that one is definitely funky. I mean, honestly, don't get me wrong, I, I enjoy a clacky or a thocky build as much as the next guy, but that one I modified, this one is straight out of the box. I like this sound profile better. I think it just sounds nicer. Um, XDA profile keycaps tend to mess with me. Sometimes it just takes me a little while to get used to them, but then I get used to them because of the same height. But being that these are a little bit more sculpted 
just slightly more sculpted than most XDA keycaps. Uh, I'm going to see if I have that problem, but them being taller, I usually prefer it. And I think my fingers are just more accustomed to that taller feel. So I, I'm going to go ahead and switch it out when I'm done with the video and production. And I'm going to go ahead and use it as my daily driver. I'll definitely come back to it. Um, I want to see if there's any differences opening up this one as well as the Pro. Um, well, I mean, I know there's differences as far as the dampening goes, but see if I can get this one to be really deep or as deep as possible while getting the other one to be as clacky or maybe as silent as possible. I don't know. Have some fun for the modifications. Um, I, I quite enjoy this keyboard. I think this is a decent keyboard. Um, it's not gaudy. I mean, yeah, you do have your Red Dragon logo on the side, but it's not in your face up front. I like the two-tone color. Um, I do believe it has a... Uh, no, actually, I think this is the only colorway they have for now, but I think more are coming. Don't quote me on that. This is definitely a keyboard that I think it has a decent sized battery, but it's not super heavy coming in at just a little over 800 grams. So um, it's not even a kilo. It's going to be easy to be able to just throw into your backpack and take with you and, you know, use whether it's with your tablet or your phone. It's one of the things that I do enjoy about wireless keyboards. I primarily use them wired. Um, I do. If I know I'm never going to take it out of the house, I usually will disconnect the battery so that it's not just, you know, getting charged and charged and discharged. And, you know, though a lot of the circuits that handle that do usually carry overcharge protection, so it shouldn't be an issue, but always check on your batteries. Uh, the lifetime on these are two, maybe three years if possible. They start swelling. Be very careful um, and don't get them wet whatever you do lithium ion does not like water it will instantly catch fire now i'm not saying this i've never had any issue with any red dragon keyboards i have had a couple of swollen batteries and some other keyboards but i won't mention their name at right now um i am working on a video about that about care and how to take care of wireless keyboards if you don't use wireless or don't use it that often um i do know some keyboards are a lot easier to get into than others so uh i think that well i've got just a little idea and as far as how you can you know make it something disconnectable on the outside but that's neither here nor there um i enjoyed this uh red dragon ucal k73 max not pro and i want to thank red dragon for sending me this model out to review so I'm going to go ahead and leave everybody with a stock sound test of this UCAL 673 Max from Red Dragon, the latest version of this model. I want to wish everyone out there in keyboard land a beautiful and wonderful day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.